Anytime you examine matter, you also have to talk about its type, what class of matter it is. So we start from the very, very fundamental, the basic, which we call elements, and we build up all the way to what we call mixtures here. So let's begin with elements. Elements are basically the lowest form of matter that you can get to, okay? So you start with elements. So elements are substances that cannot be broken down into simpler, simpler substances. All elements known um, are shown in the periodic table in their symbolic notation. So they have symbols. So for example, carbon has the letter C and copper has CU. We will once again talk about these more in depth in the next chapter. So if you uh, were to talk about elements, so you can think of them at least as a way of representing them is to uh, draw a You know, let's say this is one element. You can think of this, let's say this is copper. And then carbon, you know, for example, can be this smaller atom, which is C. So you can think of them that they are actually different atoms. They're made up of different atoms. As far as now compounds, so when you say, when you start compounding, meaning you bring these atoms and put them together, these elements and put them together and you build compounds. So for example, if you have water, right, that's a combination of hydrogen and oxygen. Sulfuric acid, it's the combination of hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen. Carbon monoxide is carbon and oxygen. And you need to know that um, although there are two or more different types of, element, of, of atoms present, it is important to realize that the compound has a fixed composition, right? So meaning the composition of water is always the same. If you have one oxygen atom, so here's, let's say, the oxygen. It will always be combined with two hydrogen atoms. So this is a compound. You see how it is. So planet Earth has water on it. Mars has water on it. The farthest galaxy in this universe, it will always be H2O. So that's what we mean by fixed composition. Now, when you build up and start combining compounds and elements together, you end up with what we call mixtures, right? So mixtures are made up of two or more of particles which retain their chemical identity and can be separated from one another by phys physical means or physical uh, methods. Uh, so uh, basically, if you... Uh, bring, let's say, oil and water and put them together. Oil and water, water is already made up of H2O. Oil is made up of lipids and fats, etc. Uh, now you're combining these two together, right? But you're not changing the identities. You still have water and you still have oil. So they're not changing. Chemically, they're not changing. Uh, so, uh, and then you can separate them, right? You can separate oil of water by decanting, pouring out the water first or the liquid the oil first, or uh, if you, let's say, have a solid and a liquid, you can filter that. We're going to get to these in the next video. Uh, so let's go to homogeneous mixtures. So these are mixtures with a uniform composition throughout, meaning that if you, let's say, if you uh, have Kool-Aid and you dissolve that in water, and it's prepared properly, okay, then that Kool-Aid should have been dispersed evenly throughout the pitcher, right? Throughout the container. So another name for homogeneous mixtures is solutions. So again, you spread out, they are spread out evenly um, uh, among the uh, 
you know, among, let's say, the water molecules, if you dissolve it in a solution, and they will, uh, they will again retain their chemical identities. So, if we were to, uh, you know, look at, for example, trying to draw here. So if we carry the example, the examples from above, we have water here. Now let me put two. And then now let's say I have another element here that I'm adding with them, or let's say an element that I'm adding with them. So if you notice here, we have a compound, we have an element, they're mixed together, but they are mixed evenly. You see on the top here, at top here you have the compound and at the bottom you have the element. So that's what we mean by homogeneous mixture. So if you, again, dissolve something in water and it completely dissolves so if you have salt and water so if you dissolve salt and water then that will make a homogeneous mixture now heterogeneous is the opposite so you're mixing let's say compounds together or whatever but they don't have a uniform composition throughout so oil and water are actually uh, you know, that's actually the best example for you to know this. So, for example, if I mix oil here, and then underneath, water will sink to the bottom because it's more dense. So again, you see that it's not uniform throughout here. It is not uniform throughout. Uh, you can also visualize this. By saying, okay, here's that again, those representations that we drew above. Add the water here. And now you let's say you have something in between here. Bear with me here. You have, let's say, another one here. And then let's say A third one.
and you notice they're not actually distributed evenly. So that's that's exactly what's happening here with uh, heterogeneous mixtures. So since we're here, let's practice these. And I would, uh, you know, if you can take a, you can pause this video and then think about whether these are uh, element, compound, homogeneous, or heterogeneous mixture. So pause this video and test yourself on these, and then you can uh, replay the video and then we'll answer them. So I hope you completed this. T, if it's a liquid completely dissolved, should be a homogeneous mixture. So homogeneous mixture. Gold, not jewelry, is actually an element. It's on the periodic table as a symbol of AU. A sandwich is definitely not an element, definitely not a compound. It's not homogeneous. It's not evenly throughout. So this would be a heterogeneous. And sodium bicarbonate, this one has sodium, has carbon in it, has oxygen in it. It has this symbol, which is baking soda. That is actually a compound. And to finalize this, if you look here, you see a flow chart with a videos, so, sorry, not videos, with uh, the differences between elements and compounds with examples with also visual representations.